Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we're going to talk about a topic we've been meaning to do, and I'm sorry there's been other breaking news. Julianne Huff and Brooks Leach, their marriage disaster, and more than just what's going on behind the scenes, because, oh, I've got some insider information, don't you worry. But what we can do and learn from this, what to do when you push away a good guy because by all accounts brooks is a really solid dude and everyone's kind of pointing the finger at julianne like how did you manage to mess this up like you had a great guy and you bungled it so we're gonna get into it um like i said i'm gonna tell you some insider info but before we do just want to remind you to follow me on instagram at shallon xo you guys weighed in on this topic suggested it and voted for it democracy in action also follow me on Instream. it's our sexy new platform we have some hookup tutorials up there kissing hjs we've got a bj one coming i think probably tomorrow probably tomorrow and then the next one we're gonna do is dirty talk and sounds and making noise in bed so go there it's two bucks a month ad free and uncensored so it's super fun also be sure to join my shell literature book club we are currently reading why men love bitches you can pick it up at the link in my bio on amazon or if you go to the reddit page the shalligator reddit page there's a free copy on there and also if you go to the reddit you can like chit chat with other girls what you're learning and submit some questions for me to discuss in the video we're going to do about uh it um next week and also be sure to listen to my podcast girl on top i read the first the chapter and the the intro and the first chapter on the last few episodes of the podcast, just to give you guys a little primer because it's literally life changing. It's the best. So Julian and Brooks. Okay. Okay. So these two got married pretty recently and things seem to hit the fan almost as fast. Oh, they, they're splitting up because our sources say that her behavior became basically intolerable. And certainly she became very bizarre publicly. She said that she was like, bisexual and look i'm bisexual you know this is not let's shade bisexual hour it's when you're married is not the time to explore your sexuality i mean that's usually a recipe for a bit of disaster if that's how you feel if you're like i need to sow my oats why'd you get married girl or maybe you're realizing that and you're like okay i gotta get out of this all right, fine. But it doesn't seem like it's a clean break. They weren't quarantined together. She was in LA um, and he was in, I think, Idaho, where he has some property and he's like out in the country and stuff. But then they just celebrated her 32nd birthday together at a pool party, like with some other celeb friends. So people are like, wait, what's going on? Are they still friends? Are they hanging out? So here's what I know about these two. I have a one of my best friends actually dated Brooks and I like posted about this topic and she she texted me she's like dude I dated him and I was like oh my god tell me everything and she's like he's a country boy he's a Canadian he's from Regina Canada yeah Regina I it they could just say it Regina but they don't for okay it's like the one thing Canada gets wrong <laughs> it's like this Regina Regina thing Blech. but he's from like the country and he's a really just simple dude and her julianne's like and so my friend was telling me about this she's like he's so sweet and he's like just he's just a nice guy he's just a simple nice guy and she's like i think that julianne's like hollywood life and hollywood obsession just wore him down like he wanted a simple life and kind of a simple wife and you know, I believe that she played up her simpleness. Like, I'm sporty and I'm, you know, I'm just a down-home girl. I'm a Mormon. Isn't she a Mormon? She's from Utah. Close enough. But then when push came to shove, actually what Julianne was into was the fame, was the spotlight. Because my friend knows Brooks, but I know Julianne. I worked with her. I wouldn't say I worked with her. I mean, I don't like know her, know her. But my encounters with her when I ran star magazine were incredibly negative incredibly negative there are very few celebrities i will say this about she is a bitch she is a self-aggrandizing complete just rude weirdo we before remember she was in that movie footloose exactly of course you don't my point before that even came out like i think like eight months before it came out she just signed the deal for something like that we were we approached her to do like an at home with feature. This is like a thing that we did in the magazine, like at home with Lala Anthony. Well, you know, it's like puff piece extraordinaire. Pictures of their house that they can take and submit. What they eat for breakfast, their design style, their favorite decorative pillows. 
nothing controversial, nothing, nothing bad. And I thought we were kind of throwing her a bone because I was like, she's cute and I bet she's got cute style. And sure, like our readers would like to see that she was on, what was it? Dancing with the, some dance, some, I, I don't care. That's the thing. I don't care. She was so zealous. I was like, whatever. This bitch is like, gets her publicist on the phone with me who was so incredibly rude. So incredibly rude. I put her on speaker so that the whole office could hear. Because I'm like, no one's going to believe that this chick is being this rude to me when I'm pitching them something positive. Positive, you know? Which, take it where you can get it. She's like, Julianne does not want to be associated with this magazine. She's a big star on the verge of like superstardom. She's a triple threat. I was like, in what? She's like acting, singing, and dancing. She can sing? Whatever. Who, again, who cares? She's like, she doesn't want to be in this magazine ever. Don't even call us anymore for anything. And we were like, are you kidding me we've never gotten that response if people don't want to do it it's polite like, oh you know what maybe maybe not a fit or they're doing something else like that with people magazine fine whatever to come so hard like that i was like you just made a very powerful enemy because at the end of the day sweetie you need us we don't need you there's a billion of you out there there's only five magazines right we're never at a loss for celebrities to write about. They're everywhere. And they are all so thirsty. Any Real Housewife, any Vanderpump Rules star would have loved to have done that spread. And that's ultimately who we went with. I think we went with Lala Kent, like, or Brittany Car Somebody, you know, again, who cares? Some other Z-lister who had the good sense to know that was where they were, who were trying to get up higher on the food chain. So I was personally delighted when Footloose tanked when the other show she was doing tanked when her didn't she try to put out an album exactly because she just was so big for her britches and was so rude about it i understand you're probably thinking like well yeah why would a celebrity want to be in a tabloid honey because they need us they are cold-blooded animals in that they need that fame they need people to be writing about them they need that publicity like if Jennifer Aniston really didn't want to be on the cover of magazines, she could have a lawyer that's so gnarly. I mean, there were plenty of people we never wrote about because their lawyers were so gnarly and just so like irritating that we're like, it's not worth it. That's fine. It's not worth the sales. It's not worth the headaches. It's not worth getting sued, whatever. But they like it. It keeps them relevant. And that relevancy, they leverage for bigger products or projects and higher paydays. Look how popular I am. I was on the cover of four magazines this week. Is that other unknown chick from Iowa going to... Bring that in? No, people want to know about me. And they act like, oh, I hate it. Oh, I just hate it when they photograph me. As we've said before, so much of the time when paparazzi catch a celebrity, the paparazzi are called by the celebrity themselves. We saw that with Ben Affleck and Ana de Armas, who is so sexy, but so thirsty for attention. And she was calling the paparazzi on herself during quarantine, trotting around like picking up dog poop in a Gucci sweatsuit. Give me a fucking break, Ana, okay? So... The fact that Julianne was so bananas about this showed me like, you don't know how to play the game, girl. Cause this is a game. This is a symbiotic relationship. Only, like I said, you need us way more than we need you. Way more than we need you. And sure enough, like her career has kind of circled the drain. Do you remember the blackface thing? When she went as one of the chicks from uh, Orange is the New Black and like rubbed, I don't know, shoe polish on her face. <sighs> And this wasn't like 2005. This was, I think, like 2017 or something. It was fairly, it was recent. It's also a stupid hacky joke. If you're, oh my God, you can go as like a rapper for Halloween or whatever. You can go as like LL Cool J. Don't go in blackface. Just wear the chains and the turtleneck and the Kangle hat. Do I have to do everything around here? It's craziness. It's craziness. So fuck Julianne Huff, basically. So I saw some very big red flags in her character like pretty early on that she was that big for her britches and that self-aggrandizing. And yeah, like I said, I was delighted when everything started to fail for her. I wouldn't say I'm delighted that her marriage failed, but I have dated a lot of hockey players. My ultimate hurt locker 
<sighs> was a hockey player. Well, he's still a hockey player. He will be a hockey player forever because he's one of the best in the world. And I pushed him away much in the same way Julian pushed Brooks away. I wanted something different and not not that I wanted something different. I assumed he wanted something different. You know, I thought he needed like the big, the big city flashy chick. I pushed him away. I dated a different hockey player. They got in a fight on the ice after that happened. And the second one, I definitely pushed him away. But like the thing I have learned about all these hockey dudes is exactly what my friend said about Brooks. They're simple Canadian dudes. They're just simple country guys. And the guy I left my hurt locker for cheated on me, married the girl he cheated on me with, this back home bitch from Canada, like so whatever-ish. And I was like, have you not seen any movie? You're supposed to leave your hometown and level up with the big city hot chick. Again, do I have to do everything around here? You don't go back to your hometown and settle with this dumpy dork. But he did. And like that is, that's their zone. That's their zone. I don't know if NBA players do that. I don't know if MLB players do that. But I know hockey players. And that is, that's exactly what they do. Like they like a very simple life, you know? And that's not what Julianne was giving to Brooks. She was apparently also not giving him sex. He said recently on a podcast that like their sex life kind of dwindled and they didn't make it a priority. If you get nothing else out of this video, please get this. Hockey players were built to fuck. They, I'm, I know that's vulgar. I'm so sorry. But they are absolute <laughs> machines. Please sleep with a hockey player if you have a chance. Because sex is all about power from the hips. That's where hockey goes. I'm like, that's a hockey. <laughs> that's their zone. Oh, my God. So I was like, so let me get this straight, Julian. You took this good dude off the market. A lot, most hockey players cheat. But everyone... And I know some other people who know Brooks independently. They're like, no, he was a re he was really devoted to her. He didn't cheat on her. And I'm like, fuck you. Ugh. You take this hot, tall, faithful sex machine off the market, and then you just put him on a shelf and let him rust. Baloney. Why? But it's something that a lot of us have done, right? A lot of us have pushed away a good guy. Why? Why do we do it? Well, there's basically two reasons. Either it was the right decision or it was the wrong decision. Let's talk about when it was the right decision. We as women are conditioned to be, to have this beggar's mentality, you know, in terms of love. Oh my God, how could I ever reject someone? Oh my God, look at this perfect man. Who am I to say that he's not enough? I've been praying to meet a good guy and here he is. Ah, I just don't want to have sex with him or he he just bores me or I don't want to settle down right now at all like five years but oh, then I could lose him I gotta do that we are conditioned to take the scraps of whatever society wants to give us right and so in that sense we we just partner up with people when it's maybe not a good idea so when you think you have pushed away a good guy did you actually do that or did you chew off your paw to get out of a trap? I was in a relationship like that. Wonderful person. Wonderful person. And I was miserable. I was miserable. And I ended up leaving the relationship because I just, we didn't have a chemistry. There was just a lot of things that were missing. But on paper, he was absolutely perfect. And I mean, in real life, he was wonderful. But he wasn't wonderful for me. We didn't have the same goals. We weren't in the same place emotionally. I was still kind of sowing my wild oats and he was he was ready to get married. And I was just like, I'm not there. So I pushed him away. I left the relationship. You know, I didn't leave it cleanly. No, I wasn't self-aware about my feelings. I was probably such a jerk. And by the time I got out, I had hurt him badly. And for so long, when I would get dumped by someone or I would get rejected or jilted or whatever, I would go back to that or think, if only I still had him. Oh my God, what did I do? If only I still had him. Uh, I would regret it. I'd be filled with regret. And then I realized I made the best decision I could with the data I had at the time. And I don't think that that was, I don't think I made the wrong decision. We were not in the same place. We didn't want the same things. And like we say about love, it's not two people looking at each other. It's two people looking out in the same direction. 
And we weren't looking in the same direction. We were going in opposite ends. And that cannot create a healthy relationship. Look at Brooks and Julianne. Because we talk a lot about those standoffs that you get in with people. Ugh, always one hair sticking to my eyebrows. Where it's like, oh, she'll change your mind about kids. Oh, he'll change his mind about going out. Everyone's going to change their mind. And actually, very rarely do people change their minds. They don't just turn on a dime. They might mature and decide they want something different. But that's a process. And that happens kind of slowly. I mean, it's like a glacial pace. If you're sitting there waiting for it, it's like, are you mature yet? It's Tuesday. Are you, are you ready to... No, nope. I'll check back Sunday. Oh, still no. It's awful. So pushing away a good guy, get really clear with yourself about what actually was going on, whether it was something bad, like, or whether this was the right thing and you are just conditioning yourself, picking up where society and the patriarchy leaves off and continuing that beggar's mentality. How dare I say that this isn't good enough for me? You know what I just said the other day? I'm so wise. It doesn't have to be an F to not be an A. You can have an A minus guy in front of you and you're like, I'm actually holding out for A plus, I'm sorry. And what the difference is between that plus and minus might be chemistry, it might be goals, it might be communication. Notice I didn't say things like height, wealth, you know, these arbitrary metrics that we place on people. It's like, well, I'm not, I'm not dating someone who's 5'8". Well, why not? Well, everyone's the same height lying down. What's your problem? You know, maybe you're missing out on a bunch of really great people because of an inch. If it's an inch somewhere else, I get it. But height wise, open your mind. So the reason you might be spiraling about pushing away a good guy could be fear based. It could be, I'm never going to do any better. This is the only person who's going to love me. How dare I demand more from life, more from myself, more from my relationships? And how dare I release this wonderful man back into the wild? What if someone else snaps him up? Honey, good. He can be good and wonderful, but not good and wonderful for you. It's all about a fit. Like I say, there's almost eight billion people in the world. Do you honestly think this is the only good guy you're going to meet? And you might be saying, uh, well, based on my history, yes, this actually was the only good guy I've met. Okay. You know what that tells me? There's more than one out there. There's not one of any species. There's not one great white shark. There's not one striped macaw. There's probably not even one Yeti or Loch Ness monster. How would that even work? There's more than one. And the fact that you found one should be bolstering. It's like, oh, okay, great. I did find a guy with a career, with height, with hair, with a souped up Duramax truck. I fucking love a jacked up truck. A Ram 3500. Ah, daddy. A guy who's kind, funny, smart, but there's a little bitty piece missing. Okay, great. Now you have a jumping off point. Now you have a better sense of what your deal breakers are. You know, actually, that lifted 3500 Ram was great, but I would have rather had a guy who was smart or who was ambitious or whatever it is. It's all about data. I like to think that the root word of dating is data. And I know it's not, I know it's not, but that kind of helps bring me back down to earth when I'm in like a crazy spiral and I'm just floating into the atmosphere of insanity. I'm like, I have gathered data. And when I feel like I've gathered data, this is not a wasted experience. I've gathered data and now what I thought was a destination, I realized was a signpost. It was, it was a sign on, the, I'm on my romantic highway leading me to my actual destination, which I haven't reached yet. And that's okay. I'm going to enjoy the journey. But there's another fear-based reason you might be pushing a good guy away. You're afraid of intimacy. This happens. And you guys have suggested this topic before and I truly didn't want to cover it because I was like, I don't, I am such like an open book. I'm so like, ah, I'm such a lover. I was like, who is afraid of intimacy? Well, I maybe should be because I get my heart broken a lot. Like I should maybe borrow a little eyedropper full of that. But the more I talk to you guys and the more girls I talk to, this comes up a lot. Like the fear of intimacy, the fear of being hurt, and you just push someone away and you torpedo what could have been a really good relationship. Now let's first get clear on the fact that you don't know it was going to be a perfect relationship. You're projecting that. You're assuming that. Your fear-based brain, I'm never going to do any better. I can never do this, is filling in those gaps. He wasn't just a hard five. He was a 10. He wasn't just kind of funny. He was the funniest guy ever. 
We had one good conversation. I bet we could have had a thousand. It's this crazy intense forecasting where you are just making tons of assumptions to the detriment of your own psyche. The only thing it's hurting is you, right? And again, you don't have the data to support that maybe. But let's say that you do. Let's say that, no, this was a good relationship. He was a good guy. And I freaked out and I panicked and I left. Men do this all the time. They do this all the time. This is why guys have the one that got away. The dream girl, the girl I always think about. No one's going to compare to my ex. We don't really have that. We have a, a man we might miss and a relationship we mourn. But we, as a gender, far less often throw someone away and annihilate a relationship that was actually going pretty well. That's that's a dude's thing. That's a dude thing. But here's how we fix that. First of all, understand what, what was going on. If this was a fear of intimacy, you know what that's a fear of? Pain. Fear of intimacy is fear of pain. It's, I'm not going to get too close to someone. I'm not going to expose my emotional underbelly because what if they jab at it? What if they hurt me? What if they leave me? That's maybe going to echo, oh, sorry, sorry. Maybe that's going to echo a relationship with my parents. I watched my dad leave my mom. I watched how it destroyed my mom. I'm not going to open myself up again like that. I'm not going to let that happen to me. It destroyed me too. Or, you know, I don't, this is what it comes down to. I don't have faith in myself to pick myself up and go on with life. It is a low self-esteem issue. Fear of intimacy is actually an issue with self-esteem because you're telling yourself that I cannot go through this romantic journey. I can't open myself up like this because if something happens, I get knocked down, I am not getting back up again. Where is your data to support that though? You're still here. You've probably experienced some heartbreak in the past that did tell you, oh my God, this was so painful. I, I never got over it. Well, you, you did get over it. You did get over it. You're still standing. You still have friends. God is still on the throne. You're still watching Shallon's videos. You are stronger than you think. And the only person telling you that you're not is you. And you can turn that faucet off whenever you choose to. And that day is today. That day is today. You are no longer telling yourself that you're a weakling. You're going to look back at your origin story, that first heartbreak, that first bad break, your parents' divorce, whatever it was, and you're going to flip that. Your origin story is now going to be your best story. You're not a victim, you're a survivor. You're not going to wear that survivor badge, you know, in, in the way that, you know, people, they're like, I'm a survivor. I, I survived a narcissistic person. It's like, yeah, no shit. We all do. Okay. Like, you're not going to go that far because it's like annoying. And it's, it's just the opposite end of the same spectrum. But you're going to flip the script. Everything in life is basically sales, right? Like dating is sales. And you want to present a sellable version of yourself. And have you ever watched a commercial that was like, well, I don't know. You could buy a kid. It's kind of stupid. I mean, look at this body design. It looks like a, looks like a, it was put together with tape. No. They're like, oh, top rated. Safe as in its class. Looks like it's put together with tape, but awesome tape. Everything is about spin. Everything is about how you choose to look at something. And you could look at all of those heartaches as eroding and corrosive and how it broke you. Or you can look at it as learning opportunities. You can look at it as growth. And you could look at it as like, wow, that wasn't the end of my story. My story is still being written. That's so exciting. Because like, yeah, I loved my ex and I wanted it to work out, but there were some things wrong. Because like we said in the last video, it's called a breakup because it's broken. And when we're getting broken up with, we don't see those cracks. We are just like, what the fuck is happening? This is so painful. I can't stand this. I want him back. Come back to me. Come back to me. But when they say time heals all wounds, as we know, it's what you do with the time that matters, actually. But they say that because then you get objectivity. You get a little further out and you're like, oh, oh, I see those cracks now. Yeah, no, he was pretty unambitious. He was actually really rude to waitresses. There were things that I didn't like. And now whew, I don't have to. I don't have to make excuses for that. I don't have to make peace with it. I don't have to accept it. I can move on and say, you know what? I don't want to date someone who's rude to waitresses. That's a deal breaker for me. Or it's a pretty big red flag. and I'm not really going to tolerate it reframe what happened and then you're going to reframe what you believe you're capable of and what the future is about to hold for you so if you push someone away and you're like oh my god Shalon was right and you've done that emotional autopsy on your ex you're like oh my god I've learned so much from Shalon <laughs> and I've learned so much from my ex relationships you know and you've grown how do you get that boy back 
How do you get this good guy back? You live contrary to whatever you were doing priorly. Let's say you had a good guy who wanted to settle down, but you were in a party girl phase. And maybe that was an intimacy issue and that was your sort of spiky armor is I'm going to go out and drink. That's how you kept him from getting too close. Maybe you just still wanted to go out and drink. You just weren't there. You weren't ready. You show them that you are. And notice I said show and not tell. Talk is cheap. We hear from exes all the time. I miss you. I want you back. And what, what do we ask? How are things going to be different? Well, I miss you. Well, no shit you miss me. Of course you miss me. Look at me. Look at these tits. They're perky. These are my perky tit years. What's, what is going to be different? And if a guy can't answer that question, you should not get back together with him. So you got to wait for him. You got to assume he's going to ask you that question too. And in fact, before he even gets a chance to ask it, you, you're showing it. You're not out at the bars. Your Instagram is totally different content. You're studying for the bar exam. You are, you have done a 360 overhaul. And I'm not saying you should change your life to get a guy back. Of course not. This all has to be authentic. It has to be real. Because otherwise, it's a bluff. And that's fucked up. Like it is, girl. It's fucked up. We don't like it when guys bluff up. It's bluff us. Like, oh, I've, I don't I don't drink anymore. And I'm, I'm never going out to the bars again. I'm never going out to the bars again. Well, that's not sustainable and it just breaks our own heart it makes us hate them and it ruins the chance for an actual reconciliation down the road when maybe they are a little bit different so if this change is not authentic and organic to you leave him be go back to what i said before about these fear-based decisions i'm never going to do better he wasn't the right one for you maybe not now maybe in five years maybe in five months right now where you're at it's not it and you've got to trust that journey you have to trust that process we use the highway example all the time the signpost you don't pull over on this exit that you know is not your destination. You're like, I don't know, maybe a casino will just like appear here. I know this is in Vegas. Maybe it'll just, it'll just like pop up or something. It won't. It won't. You have to keep on driving. So you go to this guy and you're like, no, I've, I am actually different. The, the issues that were at play are not at play anymore. And maybe those were logistical things. Like, I don't want to live in the big city. I want to live out here in the country with you. I want to have 10 dogs and five babies. You know, like I have authentically changed. You convey that. And if they're emotional things, tell him the why. Show the math. You know, like when we had to do like math tests, it's like you didn't show your work. Show your work. Hey, I've been in therapy. I've been going to therapy once a week. I've been listening to Shallon's videos. I've been learning a lot. This is why I was acting like this. People want to know the why because they want an assurance it's not going to happen again. And if a guy comes back to me without a why, I'm like, well, once the shine wears off of getting me back, we're going to be right back here. My heart's going to be broken all over again. I'm going to be back at square one. So are you. I'm going to hate your guts and you're going to hate yourself too because you knew you weren't able to execute this. You were just full of hot air. And that's not really acceptable to me. So give him that why. Give him the emotional growth. Show that work. Tell what you've learned about yourself. And make it unequivocal. And you know, my brand is not ask a guy out. It is not pursue the guy. There is. This is the only circumstance in which you need to be the one to take the step forward. Because if you pushed him away, he's the heartbroken one. And we can't expect a guy to keep chasing us and chasing us when we just keep hurting him. You know, I mean, I wouldn't tell a guy to keep doing that. I'd be like, bro, like the writing's on the wall. She's not into it. Just keep it moving. So go to him, not in a desperate way, not in a, I don't have no life without you. Be like, I miss you. And here's why that breakup happened. Here's where I was then. Here are the events and the tape loops and the traumas that fueled that. And like I said, this is the important part. Here's what I've done to dismantle it. And I'm not perfect, but I am in such a different place now. And my life reflects that. I don't have the same friends that maybe were unhealthy for me. I've mended my relationship with my sisters. That's become a priority. So now I'm not so gassed up about it. I'm back in school. I feel more whole and self-actualized. I'm reading why men love bitches. <laughs> and then see what that alignment is. And we can never, there's no like guarantee that we're going to get someone back. But I think just being open and honest with that, it's your best shot. You know, you, you shoot your shot and then it's like, okay, they can take it or leave it. And if they decide to leave it, then girl, 
that's a signpost. It's okay. It's okay. And just think of like, because I had one of my friends do this and she, she like really reoriented her life to get a guy back. I, I did that to try to get my heart locker back. I, I negotiated having a TV show that I did on the air in his market in Canada because I knew he was home for the off season and I knew he would see it. It's, it's like reorienting a satellite. It's a big deal. I wrote it in my contract. Anyway. Uh, but it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. And that's when I was like, he was not the destination. He just wasn't. Because if he was, it would have worked. We would have had a completely different... It, ugh, it's a hurt locker that clearly still hurts. It's a hurt locker that still hurts. Because I pushed... Anyway. Whew. My point is, <laughs> all you can do is all you can do. And like I said, my friend, she had like reoriented her life to like get this guy back. And she's like, I'm living totally differently and I'm sober now and I'm working out and I'm doing all the things that he would nag me about, you know, and I'm, and I'm not just doing them to get him back. It's not a bluff. I truly like, this is truly a better, this is better for me. He was right. He was right about all the suggestions, you know, and she gave him a pitch about getting back together. And he was like, no, no, it didn't work. And she was crushed. She's like, what did I do all this for then? Like, what am I getting up at five to go to CrossFit for? And I was like, for you, Devin, for you, for God's sakes. Like, that's who you're doing this for. You are better for the next relationship. And it's not about being good for a guy. It's not about that. But you are like, you've crafted this incredible emotional and physical foundation for yourself that now... When the right guy comes along, it will be right. And you have so much more awareness and so much more emotional IQ. That's never going to be wasted. That's never going to be wasted. That's always going to be a positive whether or not you get the guy back. Because like I said, signposts versus destinations. And sometimes it's okay to keep on driving. Even though you're tired and even though you want the trip to end, you're headed somewhere you're supposed to be. I promise. Tell me your tales of getting a guy back. Tell me your tales of why you push someone away. You know, I we again, we see guys do this all the time. And I think it's fascinating when I witness women doing it because I'm like, we're supposed to be better than them, you know? But it happens to the best of us. So tell me your tales. Tell me if you made the switch and tell me if you got him back. For more, click like and subscribe. And like I said, follow me on Instagram and also head over to Instream for some sexy tutorials. Two new going up in just a week. Mwah.